Hi everyone, thank you for joining me today. My name is Barry from Matusu Crafts and I am an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator here in the UK. Also available in France, Germany, Netherlands and Austria. Austria. So yes, hi, thank you for joining me today again. Um, I am coming to you with another box making video tutorial for A6 cards. All right, they're one probably one of the most common card sizes which we make. I don't know, probably a lot of people who, who watch us make A6 cards as well. And you may find yourself occasionally um, finding you've made a card which is too thick for an envelope, so you need to make a box for it. So what I have decided to do for you is show you how to make a box for your A6 cards. So all you need to do is just follow our measurements and it will be fine. Um, I have already done a video in the inches and I figured, you know what, I'm going to come and do one in centimetres as well. So you've got one for everyone out there, for your metric and imperial people, um, you've got one of each. So there is a video already for your inches, so I will pop a link to that down below for that one. Um, and this one is for your centimetres. All right, so let's crack on. So everybody, oh, for an A6 card... Let's show you how to make an A6 card to start off with, all right? So you want to take your A4 piece of cardstock. We want to cut it at 14 point, it's about 14.8, 14.9 centimetres. I'm going to go 14.8 centimetres and I am going to trim that up, okay? And then what I'm going to do then is I am then going to then score it at ten and a half centimetres. So with the Stamping Up trimmer, you have the scoring and the cutting on here. So move the cutting blade out of the way, line it up with ten and a half centimetres and score. All right, we will move that to one side for the moment. And I will grab my bone folder and... Fold and burnish. Okay, so that is your standard A6 card, okay, in centimetres. So we're now going to make a box for this. Obviously, bear in mind, this will fit in an envelope, but if you put, so especially if you're using ones where we've got the, we've got the snow globes this year in the catalogue, um, and they obviously break, take it up by about half an inch. So, and you're not going to be able to get that in an envelope, so you want to then use that for a box. So A6 card, that's how you get an A6 card, and then... We'll make a box for it. So I am using, for the lid, I'm going to be using the Let It Snow Designer Series Speciality Paper. And this is the one I've decided to use. And it's lovely because it's already got glittery bits in it already. Already into the actual card, so I haven't got to go any glittering, getting sticky with any glue and glitter. And you know what that's like. I've also got some more Whisper White cardstock here and some real red cardstock. So I'm going to do a tone on tone. I'm going to have a white base. I'm going to have a red lid with some paper. Okay. So let's start off with my card base to start off with. Grab my trimmer back in again. Put that to one side. So you can get two A6 cards out of a piece of paper. All right. So we put that to one side. So... Doing your card base, all right, you need to cut this at 14.6 centimetres. 14.6, okay, by 19.1. By 19... Now, it's really important that you get these measurements spot on, okay? Because if you're off, then your box is going to be off. So 19.1. Then you want to grab your... simply. You can do it with your trimmer if you want to. Um, I personally prefer when I'm doing boxes to use a scoreboard because it's buttered up and the, and the plate doesn't move okay you run the risk sometimes if you're using a trimmer for doing boxes if you're ever so slightly off that little bit of measurement may, may throw you off and what i've got here is the simply scored comes like this so that's that's what it's called and that's a product number 
comes in your inches and then you can then buy the adapter plate which then converts over to your centimeters okay so then that just literally slots on top and then is solid all right and what we want to do on this one is we want to score at two centimeters on all four sides okay so that's good we'll pop that to one side and i will prepare the box and then we'll move on to your lid so i'm going to fold and burnish all of these all right so that's that one and then we're just cutting so we're just gonna snip in and take a little notch out and do that on all four sides as well snip in take a notch out snip in take a notch out snip in take a notch out all right and then we will grab our trusty glue you can use snail if you want as well i prefer doing glue for boxes um, because obviously it's a permanent hold then as well i see just run out of glue or did i leave it open for too long no, there we go yeah i left it open for too long so now i've got a big splodge there which is far too much so we will take that off spread that around a bit and I'll probably just then put it over onto the other side whilst I've got it there. And let's stick that down like so. Because you are using wet glue, you do have a little bit of wiggle room time as well. Okay, so just bear that in mind. And you just basically want to get a nice, as tidy, as, t as clean an edge as you possibly can. So it doesn't look like you forced it. You're not forcing it into an area. You're not pushing it here. You're just kind of like letting it go where it wants to go. And so on. All right. And then we do the same for the other two sides over here. So a bit of glue on that tab and whilst I've got it there I'll do a bit of glue on that tab there as well. All right. So that will be once that's all stuck together will be your box base. Okay, nice simple single layer box base. Now the lid I'm going to do is a reinforced box and you'll see what I mean by that in a moment. Okay, so there is my box. Oh, got some glue on my fingers. There we go. No wonder I'm sticking to everything. I've got a bit of glue. One thing, the good thing with this Tombow glue is the fact that it's a two-way two glue. So if you stick it permanently, stick it directly to paper instantly, it will be a permanent glue. If you let it dry without sticking it to anything, it then becomes a tacky glue. Um, which is then a repositionable glue. Um, but obviously, if you get it on your fingers, it becomes tacky and then everything, then you stick to everything. All right, so there is my box. Okay, and my card base fits in there nicely. So obviously if you've got the, you've got enough room in there for some height, so for a snow dome, okay, or anything. If you've got lots of embellishments, some big flowers, or anything you've got on there, you can use that. So I'm going to grab my real red cardstock now. Now this is the this is where you need to be important here. It's two millimeters bigger than the card base. Okay, now those two millimetres are really, really, really important. Can't can't stress enough how much those two millimetres, how important they are. So we want it to 14.8 centimetres. So one, that's, that's five, six, seven, eight. All right. And then we're going to 
just going to tweak it and then chop. And then we want it 19.3 along the short, along this edge here. So one, two, three. Okay, and then cut. Trimmer out the way. Bring my good old scoreboard back in. Still using the centimetre scoreboard here. And I'm now going to be scoring at one centimetre and two centimetres. And do that on all four sides again. So one and two. One and two. One and two. All right. And now we're done with our scoreboards. Do the same thing again, fold and burnish all score lines. cut in now and we're basically going to be taking away these three squares on all four sides all right so that's what we're taking away on all four sides I hope you can see that. I think you can. There we go. It's catching the light. So, and I will show you what that looks like in a second. So, it's seven, seven cuts on each side. So, you want to cut down to the second score line. Cut down to the second. Notch it in. Get rid of that part. Take off that third part there. Notch it in a little bit. Notch it in. And notch it in. And you're going to do that on all four sides. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So one, two, three. Four, five, six, seven. All right. Last one. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There we go. Okay, bring your glue out again, and you're going to then construct it like you did the box base, okay? So you're going to pop some glue on these little tabs there. Don't do what I did the first time around and put big bit blobs on. And then we will then just stick that in. Just take your time with it, just... And glue it, and just wait for it to set up before you move over to your next part. Doesn't take long to set up, but to grab it. A little bit of glue. If you can like push it in the middle of the, but if you glue it in the middle of the cardstock as well, then when you put a little bit of pressure on it, it pushes that glue out. There, and I'm just going to do the same over on this one here.
there we go so that's those bits done now because it's a reinforced we've got these tabs here so i'm going to pop some glue on that tab fold it in on itself and it's also kind of it strengthens that inner part as well because it puts some glue it glues in the the joins so it does it does make it a much stronger and sturdier box hence i suppose the name reinforced lid You, if you you can do it singly if you wanted to. Um, there's nothing wrong with doing it singly. You can get more. Obviously, you can get more boxes out of your cardstock. I just think that a reinforced lid. If you can do the same process and do it as a reinforced base as well as a lid, you would get a really solid box. Okay, and a, a really good professional feel to it. But just by having a reinforced lid just gives just makes it feel feel good and the last one what time is it Jay will be home from work soon so he doesn't know that I'm recording so he's either gonna bound in be really really loud <laughs> if I don't finish this before time beforehand there we go Cool, that's it, excellent, there is my lid. So if I have got my measurements correct, that will now fit my box absolutely perfectly. All right, it's, it's not wobbling around, it's not falling out too easily. It will obviously fall out eventually if I keep on shaking it, but even, there we go. So it takes a little bit of going, but that fits on absolutely perfect. So if you're ever struggling with your A6 boxes, then use the measurements I've just given you. All right, and that will do. So we're just going to decorate this up. So we're going to use the we're going to use this paper. And the reason I've used this paper as well is because the pattern isn't specific to any way so it doesn't matter what way around the box goes the back is really nice as well which doesn't matter what way around the box but it goes on the paper so you can either have it that way but i think i really like that top one so let's measure this up what do we need to measure this at so it was what should i say it's come out as being a Fifteen point three in it eventually once you put all the score lines in there, which fifteen point three. So let's take that down to fifteen. Fifteen by ten and a half is what I'm going to cut my paper to. So, let's bring my trimmer in. Fifteen centimeters. You know what? I'm gonna just go. I'm gonna cut this paper to six cent six inches first, because then that way I know it's exactly halfway, so I can get that over, and then I'm going to then then I'll cut it into. So, what did I say? By 10 and a half, wasn't it? So, I'm going to do that first. 10 and a half bit there by 15, I said, wasn't it? And then I can then take off that little sliver like that. Like that. Whereas, if I'd taken that entire sliver off of that whole sheet I would have wasted that entire sliver across all of that and that little sliver will probably be what I need for the future so it's about trying to minimize your wastage all right so that's that one hope that makes sense and that then will fit nicely on the top of my lid 
like so. Do I want to make it a bigger? Yeah, I'm. I'm gonna. I want to give it. I want to see more of the red on the top of the box. So I'm actually gonna take. What did I do? Fifteen. I'm gonna take that down to fourteen and a half. And that was ten and a half. So I'm gonna take that down to ten. There we go. Oops. Sorry about that. It's not the cable. Because I just wanted to have a bigger. I wanted to have a bigger red border around it. So glue on the back. And there we go. There is a box for your cards. All right. So you can, if you wanted to, you could wrap a ribbon around this. Let's see if I've got one. I'm going to try it. I've not done a rib, I've not done a bow in this one, so I'm going to see how this works. So we go round and then go round. We snip. And then we feed that part through. Do a oh, see this is where I get myself. Do a loop, wrap that round, fold that through, and pull. Just tidy up with these tab tags a little bit. That can come over the top like that. Before you put it completely tight, just get your tails where you want them to be. And then I kind of like put my thumbs through these the two loops, grab these, and then pull it that way. And that kind of like pulls the, the tails down to the bottom and the loops to the top. And then you can then, once you're happy with that, tied it off and just put it tight and then just manip you just kind of need to manipulate with your ribbon and then if you want to you can make your bow sl smaller that's it and there is A six by six, an A6 card box with a bow on the top. I'm not sure if not that bow works a bit, but we were, it was what I had to hand and to grab. It was a neutral bow. It's probably better than the one which I had. And if you're interested in this, is a braided linen trim. Got a neutral, a neutral bit of card, a bit of ribbon. All right, so that there is how you make a A6 card um, box. Suitable for anything which is, well, what's that? Two two centimeters in height. Okay, if you wanted to make it a deeper box, then obviously you just need to make the, you just need to adjust the your sides. Okay, so score it and give obviously make some different different um, adjustments. So watch some of my other videos, and that may give you an idea of some box making with how it's done for bigger sizes. 
but this will be a, this is a, an easy way of making for any any A6 card which you make which needs some depth. Follow these measurements and you will be absolutely fine. Okay. If you want it in inches, I have done an inches video as well for you, so you can check that one out. Um, I'll try and pop a link to that one down below, so you can go over to that one if you want to. All right, so thank you for watching, and we will be back with you very soon. Okay, thanks for you. Bye. Bye.